Hi there. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Fine. I hope it uh, is okay without my headphones because I'm updating my iPhone and it's taking the USB port, so it's going to uh -huh. have to work. All right. It'll, It'll be fine. Oh, yeah. How's our boy, Eric? He's doing good. He's doing good. He's excited about this interview, so. A lot of people have asked for it. I know. I, you know, I I think I was a little bit too young for the trial, so I'm not really sure what every. I know it, uh, it was a big deal and everything, and I think in America it was a bigger deal than it was here in Europe. Oh yeah. I remember my parents seeing it on the news, but they don't remember seeing it live all day long. So oh, yeah. oh, uh, boring. So Eric, do you think you can get Nicole Brown Simpson for us? Inquiring minds want want to know lots of stuff about her. You know, first of all, Mama, I love you. I love you too. He's saying. He always he's has saying, to say that before we start. Yeah, he's giving you a big, big, big hug right now. It just—it feels like he missed you for some reason. I'm not really sure what's going on, but it's oh. almost like, oh, I just want to hug her and mm. kiss her, tell her I love her. I know her. why, because there's a lot of drama stuff going on in the family. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, he just feels like he just wants to comfort you and. and squeeze you so uh it's almost like he's trying to say i'm there don't worry i'm there Good. you're not alone we need you all right is nicole here she's here but she didn't come alone and eric is asking if that's okay yeah i don't care it's fine if it's okay with emma it's fine with me okay <laughs> the more the merrier right that's right it's party <laughs> who is with you nicole and thank you for coming first of all but who is with who do you have with you She's saying, thank you for having me. Um, she brought Ronald. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Well, um, can I go ahead and start the questions? Go for it. She says. Okay. First of all, did OJ murder you? That's kind of the big one. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Why did he get off? Why was he acquitted? I mean, what, what was that all about? Well, she says... It's because at the time, and, and if you kind of look at the times now, um, there was a lot of racial imbalance going on, especially with police. Um, um, and so the reason he really came off is because uh, the trial was no longer about us being murdered, but it was about um, getting a black man free. It was about a black man winning a trial, which is something in those days that did not happen very often. So that's why um, the focus was was shifted from justice to um, racial victory. I thought justice was supposed to be blind. It is blind. It definitely didn't see this one. <laughs> All right, uh, my next question for you was, what was Ron Goldman to you? And Ron, you can certainly interject too. I mean, what, that and why were you with him at the time? I mean, talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time, Ron. Well, it looks like they're kind of joining um, their consciousness on this one. So it's kind of like they're talking, they're both okay. talking at the same time. Uh, and I think uh, that's why she brought him along as well, because he never really had a voice uh, during the trial. So um, they're both kind of saying, like, he wasn't... <laughs> okay, so during the trial, it was um, portrayed that he was just there at the wrong time. He was just a friend, and uh, something was forgotten, and he just came over to um, bring it in. However, we had been seeing each other for a while. Oh, we had a secret relationship. Um, I really, um, we kept it a secret. I insisted on it because um, I was terrified of OJ um, and I knew what he would he is capable of and so um, not only to protect him but also to protect myself we kept it secret for a very long time 
Um, however, he did find out about it and confronted Ronald that day, the day that I, uh, him and, uh, and me were murdered. Uh, he did confront Ronald about the relationship um, and um, got into his face. And, and uh, the last thing that he told him was, you're on my list too. So those were his words. And so um, <clears throat> Ronald was called at work um, by a woman pretending to be me um, and uh, was asked to meet me at my house at a specific time. Mm. Um, and as, you know, we kind of had to arrange certain things in order to kind of try to keep it as secretive as possible. Um, he wasn't surprised about that. So he would, he told, he was at work when he got the phone call and he told his colleagues, oh, well, they just called and she left her glasses and they've asked me to return it. So that was the excuse that he had given to go see her. Um, however, the phone call was not made by her. Okay, it was made by a female that OJ had asked to make that appointment well, to kind like of make that arrangement. It seemed like he would recognize that, that was not Nicole's voice. He must have been um, a good actress. But yeah, apparently not. Um, the feeling, I don't know if this is correct, but the feeling that she's giving me is that this was somebody that OJ was dating. Um, okay at that time okay so i'm not really sure who that was because i really don't know the whole yeah details I don't, I don't about this know. whole thing so uh, but she must have been a good actress or or have been able to kind of imitate the way that she speaks um and so she he did meet her at the house um and um this was all part of oj's plan so he surprised him um grabbed him from it's like he grabbed him from behind had his head his arm against his head and slid his throat in one second it was over okay, so he like fell painful, down to the right? side it wasn't painful right was it? It, no it went really quickly and he didn't feel pain oh, good. Um, he he was one second and he was out of his body um, and then Nicole came out screaming he grabbed her on her hair and slid her throat in front wise. Okay. And she was dead in a few seconds as well. Um, and then the rage came and he really started hacking into their bodies. Um, she says the reason he was that upset was because he, um, he would uh, stalk her. He would... Um, um, almost like a peeping Tom, he would uh, look into her windows, he would um, have um, detectives like uh, follow her, uh, things like that. He was really, um, I became uh, his obsession um, because I was his property according to the way that he saw it. Um, and so he had uh, they had mentioned that they had heard that they that I was talking about maybe moving um, and seeing if I could take the kids away from because I really wanted to get out of there. I wanted to get away from him. Um, I was terrified of him, um, and I knew that he could go into extremes. He had already threatened the life of my kids. He had threatened my life. Um, several numeral times so I really wanted to move and uh, I was we were gonna do that together um, and so he decided uh, no I'm in control you're not gonna go anywhere unless I approve it so um, that was where the intent came from that is the reason why he did what he did oh, gosh. anything else more you want to say about OJ? Like, did he have some sort of mental illness? Is he a sociopath, narcissistic, borderline personality disorder? I mean, what, what's up with that him? Um, he's, he's, let's just say he's OJ. He's a, a little bit of every, there's like, it's not really, you can't really put a thing on it. Um, she's saying that the abuse, uh, comes from uh, his past. It is something that he has witnessed 
himself and um, during his uh, upbringing was considered to be normal in that family. So he also came into um, all of his relationships were abusive, all of his relationships he would treat the woman as his property uh, without any rights. They, you would have to dress the way that he said he would. Um, I needed, all his women had to have breast implants. Um, they all had to have blonde hair. Um, so he, he created you. He starts off really, That's he was ridiculous. so charming and he was so loving. I was and wondering what, it, you, what you saw in him when y'all, when, he, he is really good at um, acting. So in a way, he, um, you know, most um, people who are in a situation where they want to be in full control of everything, including um, their family members, um, a lot of times it comes from a lack of, um, you know, of, of it comes from fear within themselves. It comes from having a lack of control, so they access it, um, and, and it, it turns into a more uh, abusive way. Now, with OJ, he was really good at manipulating people. People who were his friends, who were uh, people that he worked with, colleagues, everybody. He was so friendly, and he put on this show, everybody was his best friend, um, and he was loved, and everybody saw him as the greatest guy ever, but behind closed doors, there was a whole different, uh, it's almost like living with Jacqueline Hyde, you have two personalities in one body, um, and so, at first, he really was charming and friendly and very gallant, and he'd open the door, and he was, you know, he's such a gentleman, and he was so funny, and, um, you know, he had great friends, and he introduced me to everybody, and so I was, as an 18-year-old, working, uh, you know, a normal waitress job, I get introduced into a world full of fame and glitter and money and, uh, you know, so for me, I was easily convinced to go into a relationship with a man of that statue, you know, um, and, and on top of that, he was funny and charming, you know, well, so you I was fooled, I was fooled, yeah. um, and the abuse did not happen until after we got married. Yeah, but you that, still, you were abused for years before, before you left him why did it take so long why why didn't you leave the minute he started abusing you was well it money was when it you're when you're in that position and he you know it started off as um he would always he would always be apologizing afterwards and he would promise it's going to stop and so you know i didn't want uh, in a way, you know, I have a part in this as well, you know, I accepted this, I allowed this, um, I was enjoying the, the, the world of the famous, I was enjoying the world of comfort and not having to work and um, getting everything I wanted. Um, but it came with a price. So oh, yeah. at the beginning, you know, he was always like, oh, I'm sorry afterwards. And he would promise he would never do it. Um, and then became, it's almost like you mentally become um, brainwashed uh, because it, it, later on he started turning it like it was my fault. Like, you know, you did this because you didn't do this and this and you brought this on your own. And so you actually go into a mental state where you start to blame yourself, where you start to feel guilty for him. You actually feel guilty for That's a man who is right. doing this to you. Yeah, like you know, oh, I must have upset him. Yeah. You know, oh, I must have done something that doesn't please him. Um, and so... You, you you end up in a life where you're constantly looking for excuses to justify what he does. Um, also, out of fear of um, losing my friends, out of fear of uh, suddenly being alone, not being financially stable enough, he would threaten to take the children away from me, which were my everything. I love my children very, very much. They were 
the reason also why I wanted to stay because I was afraid that if I left, that he would hurt them and I would not be there to protect him. So there's, when you're in that situation, there are so many things that go through your mind um, that you really become enslaved to your own fears and your own doubts and to um, the fear that they, that he really put on myself. Um, so it took me a lot of courage and it took me a lot of years to finally take that step. Um, but that step was necessary. It was part of my uh, my plan. It was part of my growth pattern. Um, the abuse, the the experience of being a victim was part of my contract. Yeah, tell me uh, about your contract, your soul contract with OJ and the kids. Well, it was really, you know, I came out of a loving family, so I had experienced love. Um, I had experienced respect. Um, you know, we had a pretty big family. Um, so, um, and and I had I had been taught to to work for what you you know what you want in your life. Um, so um, I came into a, a life full of love, and I really um, what I had chosen for myself is to basically have. Um, that love being ripped away from me and really experience what it feels like to be controlled mm. by somebody else, mm. to lose your rights, to lose your own way of thinking and to lose yourself. And through that loss of oneself, um, it was part of my contract to find myself again and rebuild myself step by never, step, to find the, the courage within oneself to actually get out of a situation like that because it, it takes immense courage and you really, it didn't happen for me till I was at the lowest of the lows I've ever been. And uh, it made me realize that I was braver than I really thought I was. Uh, it gave me hope for myself. I had started making plans for a new future. I wanted, um, I had found myself again because not only did we have the abuse of OJ, but I was also surrounded by the illusion of friends, oh. friends who were with you for the fame, for, uh, you know, for the ego. Um, it was more about, you know, they were just, um, individuals she says who had you know ego-based intentions with you and they were your best friend and you could talk to them but everything i said would somehow go back to oj so um it was also about understanding the value of real friendship understanding the value of love uh and of a family who does love you so um it was about the two extremes. I really needed to go into the one extreme of being the victim and come out as, uh, you know, as the winner, as the one who conquered that. Um, and at that time when I was really positive and I, I was ready for my new life, yeah. uh, I guess I had achieved my, my contract. I had overcome that hurdle and I felt good about myself and about my life. So you accomplished mission accomplished and so it was okay for me, to yes my mission was accomplished Do you have a the, trial, the trial was then had a whole different mission on a more global scale um, but for me my life was yeah. overcoming um, abuse um, overcoming yourself because you're you're battling with yourself internally um, and and really growing from that into a position of self-love and self-respect um, and so in that aspect, it was a short life, yeah. but it was a very valuable and a very intense life. Sounds like it. Well, what was the, the global contract with this trial and everything? About justice, about racism, about... He, she's saying, well, my death, the trial... Um, not so much my death, she says, it's mostly the trial. <laughs> um, it really affected the world on so many levels. It didn't just go across uh, racism. 
but it also affected humans on a very personal level. Uh, it was about um, if this was your family who was, you know, you, if this was your family who was murdered and they would do this, you know, I mean, yeah. she's saying, you know, the trial became a circus. Yeah, well, it was, it was a circus, you know, um, based on ego and self gain, she says. And, and, and when we, when we enter that path based on ego and lust for power and fame, we really lose the very essence of who we are, which is unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people really went deep inside and said, oh my God, this is what is going on in our country. And then you had other people who saw it in a completely different way, who thought that a black person being released was a victory. Whether or not he had done it, it was a victory. Um, and then that was more based on racial issues. Yeah. But then the, the judges and the, um, the lawyers, it changed all of their lives as yeah. well. They really got confronted with their own humanity. Um, the people who defended OJ knew that he had done it. They knew he had told him, them, he had confessed oh to them. God. And so you That's still had to defend know. him. Oh. And um, so for them, it was an extreme um, lesson of, you know, what do you do with this? You know, it's about humanity. And, and, and for the, you know, for the opposite uh, position, the same thing. They knew he had done it and he walks free. You know, the, the conflict within oneself is immense at that time. You know, what if this was my daughter? What if this was my son? Um, so it's very hard to explain what it did because there's so many aspects and it, it really um, took the whole country on a road. It really took the whole country on, a, on this trip of madness and judgment and injustice in a way as well because the justice system now when it comes to celebrities has been changed because of the oj trial because back then people who had fame who had stature they were treated differently than than criminals you know they weren't criminals they were famous you know so if we look at the things now that happen with famous people, they are trialed just like everybody else. Good. The OJ Simpson trial made sure that they weren't going to repeat that that again. Good. They weren't going to repeat that mess again because there was so much evidence and everything just got swept away um, like it was nothing. So in a way, she says, now I understand that everything had a purpose and I understand that everybody needed to be um, almost be confronted with their own humanity, right? And the lessons that were learned from that. From a human perspective, she says, from us, she says, let's, let, let's do it from the both of us because Ronald's like, yeah, I feel the same way. Um, you know, they're saying, you know, we not only, we not only lost our lives, you know, we were also robbed of our humanity and, and of our dignity because if the public kind of became, in a way, as inhumane as the killer. We were no longer uh, considered to be victims. We were no longer considered to be these humans, good-hearted, because we were. We were good-hearted, um, loving people who were uh, robbed from their lives. We were just considered as evidence. We were we had just as much value as the gloves or or um, you know the other evidence or the the car. We were just as valuable as that. There was no more hue. Or we were basically stripped from our humanity. Um, and so from from a human perspective, that was hard. That was hard because after I passed away, I didn't I didn't immediately cr cross over. I did have an angel with me who was helping me, but I stayed because the weird thing was when I crossed over, I saw my body and I saw Ronald. My, Ronald was not there. He had already immediately crossed over. Um, me, on the other hand, I 
looked at OJ and I looked at our bodies. And the only thing I can think of was, what about my children? My children were sleeping in that house. So that was the only thing that I could think of. And um, that is what kept me on earth for a little bit longer. That was um, my drive to kind of stick around. Um, I did go to the trials, but I didn't do it for the trial. I really didn't care. Um, I was there for my family and I was there for my children who were sitting on the bench thinking, I'm going to lose both my parents. Well, you know, uh, I hear that I understand you were a very good mother. That motherhood was extremely important to you. It, they were my everything. They yeah, were children. the reason I fought this hard to get out of this situation. They were um, my inspiration to love myself. Um, and they were my reason to keep going because I had suicide thoughts a lot of times, but I never committed to it because I couldn't leave them alone. Well, let me let me ask you, do you have a question, I mean, a, a message for either your children? Let's start out with Sydney. Do you have a message for Sydney? She's saying that Sydney is still having a hard time with everything, and it's, um, it's brought unbalance to their lives. Uh, it's brought conflict within themselves. So I just want to tell Sydney that I love her very much and I'm with her every day, um, that she can talk to me uh, about anything, um, that I will find a way to respond to her and that I will find a way to connect to her. But to please don't identify yourself with what happened. Don't, uh, don't let that become your reason to find unbalance and not be happy in life. I just want her to be happy. All right. What about a message for Justin? Don't let fame and ego get to your head. Mm, okay. What about I love you very much, Justin. And I want you to know that being yourself, finding love and compassion for others, but mostly for yourself, is what creates happiness, not money, not power, and not materialistic things. Please love both of you, love yourself, and then the love will follow you. What about a message for OJ? Gulp. She says, I forgive you. Wow. I forgive you because he was part of the contract. I can now see where it came from, and I can also now understand what your lesson is, and you are learning this lesson every day and being confronted with it. So um, learn it, grow, and move on. She says. What is the lesson for him, the main lesson? Um, he's constantly being uh, reminded and confronted with the fact that he took my life and that he took another person's life. Um, so he is learning that ego and that control is an illusion, that it can be taken away at any time and that it, it can really destroy the humanity within himself. Okay. Um, now you had a, a relationship with Faye Resnick while you were separated from OJ. and. From what I read, it almost was like a romantic relationship with this woman. Maybe I'm mistaken. What kind of relationship did you have with Faye Resnick? She's just making me feel like it was just friendship. Okay. It was not really that intense okay. of a relationship. All right, now I have one, another one from a blog member. Uh, what does she think of her sisters trying to get into the spotlight off of Nicole's name and tragedy? Uh, her name and the promise with the nonprofit her sister, I think, Denise started, the Nicole Brown Foundation. So I don't know, what, what, what about the sisters? Are they doing the right thing? Are they capitalizing off of your, your death and the whole story? She says, I have no problem with that. Um, in a way, it is their way of processing, it is their way of keeping me close. Um, and in another way, it's uh, they also help people. 
They also um, do a lot for charity and to help people with domestic violence to find a way out, to find um, a place to stay. Because a lot of these women don't have an income, they don't, they're not allowed to work, they don't have any money. So that's another reason why a lot of people stay with their abusive husband or spouse. Um, you know, there's no way out. What are they going to do? Um, and so it's not really about the fame and it's not really about using my name. It's really about um, helping people to not end up like me. Um, and in that, uh, in that quest for them, it's almost like they're trying to save me oh. uh, by saving others. So I fully support it. Yeah, to make her life, your life worthwhile. And your yeah. Death. And they are also they also have become very spiritual after this journey. Oh. So um, we do communicate. I do communicate with my family a lot. So. Okay. Well, let's go on to some more spiritual questions that I always ask um, the notable figures like yourself. Um, were you here to, I know what you were here to learn, were you here to teach anything in particular? Maybe you've already covered this, but. I was here to teach women who are in a situation like that um, to still be strong no matter what happens, that you can um, overcome this. Um, I was also here to teach society that domestic abuse should no longer be ignored, that there are serious consequences, uh, or there can be very serious consequences on this. So um, there's also been a lot more awareness since my death for domestic abuse. So um, I hope that I gave women who are in the same situation the courage to um, say enough is enough, and to retake, uh, claim, claim, reclaim their lives. Uh, and um, I know that um, society is no longer as blind to the abuse as we used to be several years ago. Um, when people notice that there's a lot, there's yelling and screaming going on in houses, a lot more people will pick up the phone and call the police now. Good. So you think you accomplished everything you set out? in that life as Nicole Brown Citizen um, to accomplish? She says I did. It was a very intense, um, a very emotional ride. Oh. Um, believe it or not, I did accomplish what I, uh, what I came here to do. Well, that's awesome. Now, do you have any regrets? The only regret I have is that I couldn't stay longer for my children. There's nothing you, you could have done to avoid that. Yeah. Um, can you share a past life or another life, it could be a future life, that most influenced your one as Nicole Brown Sim Simpson? She's saying, well, uh, the one that, um, that really uh, led me to this one was a life where I was the abuser. Oh. Uh, um, I was a farmer. Um, it's kind of giving me the time, like 1700s. Where, um, where was it? It looks like Ireland. Okay. Um, he said that he was a drunk as well. Okay. He had a lot of issues with himself. He was also raised uh, in a family where. Um, abuse was common uh, where um, the men would uh, go to work, we would work hard um, and we would drink hard afterwards and we would come home and um, work out our frustrations on our children. Uh, I, I was a person who also beat the children. Um, it didn't just stay with um, with my wife, uh, it was also the children. So. Um, it gave me a sense of control over who uh, who I was and over my life because I didn't feel like I could control the fears and the anger inside, but I could take control of my family life, of um, um, getting what I want. 
from these people. So it was a, a sort of compensation. Um, <clears throat> I did. <laughs> I did end up differently than I did in the, in, in the Cole's life. Um, my wife eventually had enough. Um, when the kids were grown up and they had left the home um, because they refused to stay there, I had uh, yeah. begged them to become part of the farm. Yeah. Um, they got out of there as soon as they could, which I don't blame them. Um, but um, my wife eventually had enough. Um, and she poisoned me. She put something in my food, and that's how I, how she got how she got rid of me. Um, it was just a it was a yeah it was a life of being in control, and and, and basically uh, I was in OJ's footsteps. I was looking at it through what he sees now, um, and so I wanted to come back as Nicole to actually see what my wife had gone through to experience the other side. Okay. Um, of, of the control issue, so... You should have poisoned OJ. Oh. I should have. <laughs> all right, Jay, do you have any messages for humanity at all? Advice, messages? She says, you know, I just want everybody to understand that everybody's brave in some, how, in some way. Um, it's all about discovering who you are and uh, understanding that nobody has the right to control you and nobody has the right to abuse you. So, um, in a way, I allowed that to happen um, until I found myself and I find the strength to uh, understand that I don't, I don't deserve this. Um, Never let anybody take away your shine. Never let anybody um, turn yourself against you. Okay. She That's says. Awesome. So stay true to yourself, love your yourself, and respect yourself. If the other person does not do that, please step away. Right. Can you share anything new about yourself that we don't know about? It doesn't have to be deep. It could just be fun. I mean, anything. She says, I love dancing. Okay. <laughs> I, would, uh, I would dance naked around the house. Oh. Well, you should teach me how to dance. <laughs> she she says, yeah, I tried to share the kids were in school. OJ was gone. Um, that was kind of my, my time to be me. Um, so I would take a hot shower kind of wash everything off. I always felt dirty, so I had to like wash the filth off. And um, when I when I showered, I felt better. I felt my energy was lighter, I felt good. And then I would put music on really, really loud. Sometimes the neighbors would complain. Uh -oh. And I would just dance around naked. Uh, I, it was my time where, uh, it's almost like meditating. I was that was my time where I totally disconnected from the world and from everybody. It was just me and the music, and I really, I really love that. And I do that sometimes now still too. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> oh, well, I think everybody knows now. Eric, do you have anything you want to ask her? Um, he's saying, did you have any dreams before you met OJ? Was there anything you wanted to accomplish? Good one. Because OJ came in and decided for her, so. Yeah. Made her dreams for her. She said I did, and I did have a lot of, I was a little bit all over the place. I was not a, a person who really knew, oh, that's what I'm going to do, and that's where I'm headed. Um, but I loved children, and I loved um teaching and I loved every, anything that was about um, teaching um, and caring for children. So that's something I really wanted to go into um, that I never got a chance to. So, um, you know, I just, um, I was young and, and you know, things what, happened. <laughs> what, what were your dreams, what were your plans after you separated with OJ? Were you going to go back to work in some way or? Um, yes, I was going to. Um, I was going to go back to school, to college or, or university. I, I hadn't decided yet. But my my first 
uh, my first big job that I wanted to do was move, was get the heck out of there, yeah. get as far away from him as I could, so I could start feeling safe again. Yeah. As long as I lived there, even when I had left him, I never felt safe, not one day. Okay. Now, uh, Emma, do you have any questions for her before we close? Um, yeah, maybe. Um, During the trial, did you ever, since you were there with the kids, right, she said, um, did she, if she ever had any sense of uh, anger towards OJ, or did she ever felt, um, yeah, like she just, I don't know, like she just wanted to scream at him or something, you know? That's, I, I don't know. I can see myself dying, and there's this killer yes. um, who who did this to me. I, I think as a, even as a spirit, since she hadn't crossed over yet, you're still kind of in your human form, right? So I think for me, I would be like, yeah, <laughs> a hog dip or something. If she ever had that 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 urge to like attack him somehow or haunt him or make him face it, like, hey, I'm here. See, you killed me, but I'm still here. <laughs> um, that's what I would do, but you know, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> she said, I felt a feeling of disappointment more than anger um, towards him. Um, she says, it's, it's a little weird and a little hard to explain, but it was almost like I was disappointed that he couldn't be man enough to admit what he did. That, it was really weird, she says, and, and it, it was probably because I was so concerned with my children and my family, they were going through hell. Um, during that process and during they it's like the whole time the process was was going on they couldn't close it off they couldn't um you know the grieving process just kept being prolonged and prolonged and forever and ever and they just they couldn't just um you know they didn't never had the opportunity to really um you know just be alone and shut everybody out sometimes people need to do that when when you lose somebody so close and you lose your mother, you're yeah, you, you, yeah, some people need to close themselves off. They need to be away from everybody and leave me alone. They never had that chance. And that's yeah. why, you know, my children are still in balance because of this and my family is still as well. They never really got the grieving period that they deserved. It became a show and everybody was taking pictures and there was media all around the house they never had a moment to just that's, grieve that's uh, and so i was really it was really about me um taking care of them i was almost helping them grief in a way helping them with that energy um pretty similar she says like eric did with you he stayed around and tried to help you and process all these uh, emotions and energies that were coming up uh, so it was more of yeah I, it wasn't a, a feeling of anger towards OJ. It was more of a disappointment that he wasn't man enough to just admit that he did it. All right. Well, thank you so much for this interview. I hope it, it gave you a chance to air things. Is there any last thing you would like to express to the world? She says, I just want to say to my family that I love them. Uh, I am sorry they had to go through this. But I, I am guaranteeing you that there will be valuable lessons learned from this. All right. Well, thank you so much. And thank you, Eric. Thank you, Emma. You're welcome. Eric's going, Mwah. I love you guys. It was a great interview, Mom. I like this. I love it, too. <laughs> you guys, I'm going to post on this YouTube how to contact uh, Emma. She's awesome, as you can tell. And uh, stay tuned for the next, uh, stay tuned for the message that, uh, that follows, and we'll see you next time. Emma, All I'm right. going gonna, gonna to call you right back. Okay. Oh, that's bye. Okay. All right. Bye.